Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Today we have a game by Bobby Fischer with the white pieces against Samuel Reshevsky with the black ones. And this game goes to show that traps are still very much possible at the highest level of chess, at grandmaster level. A lot of times, at least when I think of traps, I think of beginner gameplay. I think of a lot of, uh, you know, lower rated players falling into traps. But really, traps can occur at any level in chess. And this game really proves it as Bobby Fischer uh, uses his Bobby Fischer trap um, that is now named after this game. So let's go ahead and take a look at the game. Before we get into the video, I just want to say that over 88% of you who are watching my videos are not subscribed. So make sure you guys subscribe for more of this chess content. It's not hard and enjoy the video. Bobby Fischer has the white pieces. We, this, we see the Sicilian defense um, and, and here we see this the dragon variation. Very typical um, up to this position. Nothing really uh, new black castles and now bishop b3 and this is the main um, focal point here in the game where black makes a major mistake which is knight to a5 and the point of knight to a5 is very clearly to just attack the bishop right you want to attack the bishop you want to trade away a key piece for white because right now for white this bishop is quite annoying uh, it's aimed at the king and in general in the sicilian defense often for white this light square bishop um, is very powerful, and so black is looking to trade it off um, very early in the game, uh, but this runs into the Bobby Fischer trap, and so I do recommend that you pause the video, you try to figure out what white can do here to punish black from going uh, and trying to take their, their bishop, and uh, once you're ready, make sure you unpause. So the great move here is actually e5, and the move e5 it seems, uh, it, it doesn't seem like it's actually achieving much because the, the knight can simply move back um, and then you're in that same predicament where black is still threatening to take the bishop, but it actually does a lot. So first, let's notice what happens if black takes the bishop immediately. That is very bad because now white can take the knight here um, and notice if the bishop takes, then obviously white can take back and you're just up a minor piece here. But instead, if in this position, black takes the rook that's not really much better because now uh, you can take the bishop here the king has to take um, and once you capture back the knight you're gonna be in a position where uh, you have two minor pieces for a rook but even more importantly you have more development going your king can castle whereas this king is not as safe and in general white is just clearly winning here or is clearly better at least in this position so let's go ahead and move a few a few moves back uh, that is why you probably don't want to take the bishop immediately. And so what else can you do? Well, uh, the knight probably is going to move. And so where can you move the knight? Notice that this is the only safe square for the knight. Uh, both of these squares are very clearly guarded by this knight. If the knight moves here, obviously the queen grabs it up. And so what about h5? Well, that runs into g4, actually trapping the knight and winning it, which is why the knight does indeed have to fall back Already, it seems very bad for black with all of their pieces um, on the back rank, but um, it even gets worse from here because now white has just a beautiful move that really uh, ties together this trap here. So make sure you guys pause the video and try to figure out uh, what white can do here to just win the game. Um, and this is the only winning move that white has. So at this point, I will go ahead and share the solution. You're going to go ahead and you're going to grab this pawn with a bishop. That's why you so carefully place the bishop on this diagonal where it can attack um, this king side here. You're going to go ahead, take this pawn, and it seems very crazy because this king, I mean, if we, if we move forward, if we move back one, one, uh, one move, this king seems very, very safe. All of these pieces, they're on the back uh, rank, but they seem very safe. But with this beautiful move, it really uh, opens up the whole defense that, that black has and it really starts to, black really starts to crumble here. So what can black do? Well, let's say they take with the rook. Well, here Bobby Fischer uh, very easily can just play knight to e6. Uh, because the pawn on, on f7 is gone, it's no longer stopping the knight uh, from coming to e6. And actually the queen is trapped here. Notice that if the pawn takes, then you obviously win the queen. Instead, let's suppose that the queen wants to move. Notice there's no safe squares. Both of these squares are guarded, are you know hit by the knight, and this square is indeed hit by the bishop. So there are no safe squares, which is why the rook taking here, you lose a, a queen. So what else? Well, 
uh, what if you move the king over here to h8? This is the other legal, the second legal move. Well, this is no better because a similar idea, you move the knight to e6, and because of this pawn here that is no longer there, you have this beautiful way of winning the queen, uh, very similar to last time. So finally, what if the king takes, this time replacing the pawn here and actually kind of stopping the knight from coming here because it seems like black can just take. Well, actually, uh, white, does not, uh, white, white is not scared of this king here, and instead Bobby Fischer plays this beautiful uh, knight to e6 move anyways, and the point is, uh, similar to last time, the queen is trapped here, the pawn can't take because of the pin, but the only difference is now what if the king takes? Well, this actually runs into a pretty long checkmate series. Uh, so you start with ki uh, queen to d5, uh, dragging the, the king more and more into your territory. Then you play g4, um, again, dragging the king into the territory, but also enabling this rook here on this g file, um, and that is really the reason that you can win this game, because now rook to g1, forcing the king um, onto the h file, and now whatever black plays, you're going to be able to checkmate. Let's start with, let's suppose that black um, plays, let's say, king to h, uh, h5. Well, now you can play queen uh, over here to g2, and you're threatening mate on g5. There's nothing black can do. Um, and yeah, whatever black does, you're just going to be able to mate uh, on the next move on g5. Let's go back. Let's say instead the king moves over here to h3. You play queen to g2. The king moves up and now queen to g4 mate. And finally, the best move for black, but it's not much better, is uh, king over here to h4. There's a couple of ways to punish this king here that's uh, really all on its own. Um, the way that I found first is, is bishop over here to g5, but queen to e4 is also winning. Uh, I mean, everything is winning, but queen to e4 is equally as good, but uh, bishop to g5 is, uh, is a very quick checkmate in two. The king moves over here to h5, let's suppose, um, and in that case, you end up having uh, queen to d1 checkmate after the rook is sacrificed. If instead the king moves down one, well, queen to g2 checkmate. So uh, nothing works here for black, as I just showed, which is why this is a very powerful move, uh, knight to e6. The king just cannot take um, and, and again, it seems, if we go back, it seems like black is very safe here, uh, but that really goes to show how powerful a bishop can be, just exploding the whole defense that black has here, um, and really taking advantage uh, of this beautiful tactic here with the pin. Um, in the game, what happened was that the king took, and then knight to e6, and now the pawn took here, um, and Samuel just had to play with, with uh, down a queen. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this game. I certainly think this is a, a really nice tactic or a, a really nice trap and a tactic. Um, and actually one of the most important things to remember here is that no matter where you are, what rating you are, you can always fall into traps and you can always create traps to your opponent. Um, and I just found this game very awesome. Make sure you guys subscribe if you want more of these videos and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.